You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, September 2nd show. I provide you news on everything money, fresh information on market trends and conditions in our local economy. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. You can talk with the guests that I have in studio today by calling the show at one 855 1150 Again, that's one 855 400 1150 or online at com And in studio right now, Blaze DeVera. And we're going to be talking about mastering the art of selling. Blaze, first time in studio today. Very excited to have a conversation with you. I'm very excited as well, Tina. Thank you. You're welcome. And a little bit about Blaze. Uh, Blaze is of Blaze Consulting, Blaze Devera Consulting, has been in many sales roles roles for cold calling, selling advertising, and selling real estate. His diverse background in sales, as well as his philosophy of always growing as a salesperson, has given him innovative ways to help customers and salespeople. Blaze pulls his knowledge from multiple sales experts and uses his own unique experiences to help salespeople reach their highest potential. Blaze has attained top producer status at every company he's worked for as a community sales manager for Quadrant Homes. He had the number one new home community in 2012 and 2013. He was the number one broker in Skagit County for GCI and units sold in 2013. And this year, he was one of two listing agents with D.R. Horton that was chosen to fly to Texas to meet Donald Horton himself. Blaze is very excited to share his formula for success. And you know, I'm um, really excited to have uh, an interview here with you, Blaze, because I really do believe in uh, to mastering success is to observe others who are at a higher level than you are, see what they're doing and make it your own. So I'm excited to share the wealth of information that you have with all of the experience and success that you have uh, felt. So our topic here today is master the art of selling. So Blaze, how would you recommend creating trust and rapport with customers? Well, that's a great question, Tina. And first, what I'd like to say to the listeners is, you know, why do you want to make more sales and why do you want to make more money? There's usually a lot deeper reasons that go into that besides the sales and the money. So maybe it's you know more time with your family, financial freedom, paying your children's college, things of that nature. So mm-hmm. I, I really recommend writing that why down, finding out that reason and keeping that in front of you, which will really catapult your sales. Yeah, and you know, our uh, first guest, Kathy, is a perfect example of that. It's just, you know, what her passion has been able to um, allow her to do with uh, legacy caring. So, Blaze, how do you transition from that to a more of a sales conversation? So, you know, what I do after I'm, I'm creating rapport and things of that nature, obviously I'm doing things, you know, uh, obviously to create rapport, you need to be a person of integrity. Mm-hmm. There's things like neuro-linguistic programming and things of that nature that go into, you know, creating that that trust and that rapport with your client and being the right kind of person. But how I transition into more of a sales uh, topic is really having a hook, especially in business to business sales. Um, I always had a phenomenal hook. So uh, a generic hook would be something like, if I could increase your profits by 20% in the next year and increase your team's productivity, is that something you'd like to know more about? Mm-hmm. Now, and then I, I follow it up with a question. So I like to ask their permission to actually go into the, the discovery process, uh, if you will, which, you know, something to the effect of, would you mind if I ask you a few questions to see if you're a good fit for my product or service? Love it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is really important to dial in and and, uh, the words that you're using so that you can get the best results Mm -hmm. when communicating with your clients. So, please tell me a little bit more about how you assess your customers' needs. Definitely. So, um, in my experience, the spin selling discovery process is really the most beneficial process in sales. It's really reverse psychology. So it's getting prospects to tell you the benefits, mm-hmm. not telling, not you telling them the benefits. So if um, I tell someone the benefit of my product or service, they might be listening, right? Mm-hmm. They might not be listening at all. Um, it might not even be a true benefit to them. So, but if I get them to tell me the benefit, obviously, for one, it's going to click in their head much, much quicker. Uh, and for two, it's obviously a true benefit to them. And we all know the buyers have a lot of fear. They have fear of making the wrong choice, of making change, of what others will think. 
So these all there's all these types of fears. So this technique converts the fear of buying your product to the fear of not buying your product based on what it's going to do for your life and your current situation. Yeah, and you know, when I've, I've, I talk with people, I mean, ultimately, in, in being good in sales and selling your product, it's mm-hmm. because you're doing what's best for the consumer. So it really, being um, a master at what we do is important so that we can really help our consumers because the mm-hmm. idea is for them to see that this product is what they need. Otherwise, mm-hmm. we wouldn't be selling it, right? Definitely. You know, my formula I talk about is, you know, what you just said, it's you've got to communicate the why, what's the why behind mm-hmm. it for them, finding out what's important, and then the risk and benefit, the risk if they don't and the benefit if they do. Um, also bringing in, you know, data because mm-hmm. that's going to connect with the logic side, but mm-hmm. then the stories. And so if you can tie in their why, mm-hmm with a story that's similar to theirs, it really helps to build that emotional connection to what they need. Definitely. Um, and powerful I, stuff. Yeah, and I always like to come from a place where I feel like the um, that if, you know, I need to come from a place where I feel like the product or service I'm selling is going to benefit the prospect more than the commission or sale yes. is going to benefit me. Definitely. Love that. So let's uh, move over to presentation and how you conduct your presentations, place. Definitely. So what I see a lot of salespeople doing is feature dumping. So talking about features and benefits that, that their prospects don't necessarily care about. So you really need to construct your presentation based on what you found out about them in the discovery or needs assessment process. So ask them questions that lead back to that current debt dissatisfaction that they have mm-hmm. and the benefits of moving forward with your pro, uh, your your product or service. Love it. And and taking a very consultative approach in, in my opinion you need to be, you know, actively listening obviously and listening about 70 to 80% of the time I would say and talking about 20 to 30% of the time. Mhm. And I think it's, you know, also when you're asking, if you're asking a few times so that you can really get to the core of what it is, Mm because sometimes, especially in a client uh, business uh, relationship, they're not going to be as open as we would be as we're talking to each other as friends. And Mm so asking a few different ways to really help them get to the core of what the reason is that they need this product and to be able to move forward. So, uh, Blaze, what do you feel is the most effective way to create a sense of urgency? So there's a couple different types of urgency. There's personal urgency, then there's product urgency. Now it's really, really difficult to create product urgency uh, unless you're selling a product or service that's very inexpensive without personal urgency. So how do you create that personal urgency? You create it through the spin selling questions. I wasn't able to go over all of those, but I uh-huh. definitely would love to in the future. Um, and you really create that personal urgency by making them feel their current discomfort and pain in their current situation and then showing them the benefits of what life will be like without having those issues with moving forward with your product or service. And then you can layer the product urgency on top of the personal urgency. So for real estate, I'm a real estate agent as well. Uh Price is going up, one of a kind home, home that meets your needs the best in my whole community. I was in new home sales, uh, scarcity of a product, things of that nature. Then you can go ahead and create that. Yeah. And also bringing back the story that you have, you know, found out Mm -hmm. the, the why behind it that's important for Mm -hmm. them and, and drawing in, you know, if they're, I would say if they're a renter Mm -hmm. and you always have somebody that Mm -hmm. could have bought and they missed out that opportunity and they're still renting Mm -hmm. so they can connect and see that directly to them if they're renting. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Powerful uh, stuff. So Blaze, what, process do you go through when overcoming objections? Well, one thing I think uh, that is important to note is we're all unique individuals. Mm -hmm. And um, it's obviously great to get objections out as early as possible in the process and not to project your own objections uh, onto your prospects. Yeah. So um, just to give an example, um, I actually had a community previously that was by 405. And we were walking there with a couple. It was very loud outside the home. This home with the, was the closest home to 405. But you couldn't hear anything inside the home. And so um, I was there with the wife. The wife loved the home. The husband was like, this is great, but watch this. And he opened the window, and this flood of 405 noise came in. Um, and I shut up and listened. Uh-huh. And the husband said, you know, listen to that. And the wife said, you know, it's lively. I like it. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, awesome. okay. You know, uh, objection overcome. <laughs> uh-huh. Yes, yeah. And don't you say, I say also that, you know, the common questions that are asked, really those are the objections. They're just formed in a nicer way. And, 
Um, you know, I always say eliminate versus overcome objections mm-hmm. because the objections don't exist if you address them up front before they come up. And what a lot of people in sales do is they wait for them to come up because they're hoping that they don't come up. Mm-hmm. And so if you use real estate for an example, if somebody is, is thinking about buying real estate, they're always at least thinking about why not go with a discounted shop, Mm -hmm. right? Not to say anything bad about either one, but Mm -hmm. that is something that obviously they're thinking about. Whether or not they uh, bring it up front, it doesn't matter. So you need to overcome it, have it right in your presentation, your initial conversation with your client so that you eliminate that. And then it's never an objection. I mean, it's really powerful stuff. And, you know, I um, uh, have my course of one-timing your business where Mm -hmm. really the the objections are the same ones. They come up over and over. Mm -hmm. So get them in your presentation, your conversation, And and the reason, again, why is just so that you're providing the best service to your clients and helping them ultimately reach whatever dream that they have with your product, correct? Definitely. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more uh, uh, about that and what's important, uh, Blaze. Yeah, definitely. And I I think that, you know, I'm on the exact same page as you. You want to get objections out as soon as you possibly can in the sales Mm -hmm. process, obviously. You want to kill the monster when it's a baby, not when it's Godzilla's eating the city, right? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, you know, to me, there's a difference between, you know, most objections are really just underlying questions that people have. Yes. And so... um, We are uh, right on the same track here. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, um, you know, a lot of people have complaints that they automatically throw up, right? Buyers, buyers have complaints that aren't necessarily true objections. So um, what I actually do when they throw up uh, an initial supposed objection is I treat it as a complaint. I actually ignore it. I, hmm. I actually I actually don't really say much and I just move forward with my presentation because there's a good chance they're going to run out of steam and it's not actually going to be a true objection when it comes down to it. it's just going to be a complaint. Now, if they bring it up a second time, I hear them out. I say something like, I hear you. Uh-huh. Then I keep moving forward. Now, if they bring it up a third time, it could be a real objection. What I actually do is I feed it back to them. So let's say hypothetically they say that the, pri- the price of my house is too high. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to say the price is too high. So Uh what does this do? This actually puts the objection back in their court. So now they have to justify to me why the price is too high not have me defend my product. I've asked this question before and had people answer their own objection and we just move forward. Yeah. Interesting. So, Blaise, um, what about, let's get to, um, now that we're uh, wrapping up our time here, it's perfect to get into a close. So Mm -hmm. what is your suggestion in how to appropriately close and to land that that sell that deal definitely so obviously sales is a fluid process so um, you know everything I've spoken about here does not go in perfect order it's all kind of tied together here you want to be closing as soon as you possibly can in the process asking trial closes asking leading questions things of that nature Um, and you want to be professionally persistent not pushy so you know all the sales gurus CDs I've listened to books that I've heard say you know you need to overcome five objections or ask for the sale at least five times Uh And I do believe that, but there's a difference between being a pushy salesperson and professionally persistent. Yes. So if I, you know, ask a buyer at the end of the process, do you want to buy this, do you want to buy this, do you want to buy this, and I ask them five times, it's going to push them away and they're not going to want to talk to me again. Yes. Um, so you need to have an arsenal of closes. I recommend that people have at least 25 closes that they have scripted, memorized, and role played. Mm-hmm. So know your dress close, your takeaway close, your summary close. So you can literally... You know, let's say that you have done a great job up to this point. You assume the sale. They come up with an objection. You go over the objection process I spoke about. Then you ask for the sale again. Maybe even get off the subject. Get them laughing. Humor is extremely important in sales. Mm -hmm. Go back and maybe this time do a summary close. Handle objection, direct close. Handle objection, take away close and get the sale. So I want to emphasize this. I mean, it's very hard at the end of your presentation for people that trust you, like you. They've said yes to you many times and would greatly benefit from your product and have been laughing throughout the process to say no to you at the end. Yeah. I'd love it. No. And, you know, so I'm, I, it's, it's really great to have, a, um, have this in the studio for my uh, listeners that are in business because a big percentage of people out in the business world are in sales. And again, the, the reason that we want to be the best at the best that we can in selling is because it's best for our client. Definitely. So thank you for being an expert in that area and sharing some of your, uh, your tips. And if you want to get more information, because there's not enough time for Blaze to really lay out everything that he has for you, go to themoneyara.com. I can directly connect you with Blaze. Or Blaze, do you have a website you can uh, direct my listeners to? 
Yeah, it'd be LegacyCaring.com, actually. Perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. Blaze, thank you so much for coming in studio. Look forward to having you back again. I really appreciate it. It was a pleasure. And coming up next on the Money Hour, I am still here. Person-centered dementia care in Alzheimer's journey. I have Dawn DeSonye, Transitions in Dementia Care, right here on 1150 AM KKNW.